Pioneer Woman would never. Alright, welcome back to a, another video. I am trying something new today. You're going to hear the dogs definitely because I'm up in their domain. Um, I'm going to do like a recent reads, but I'm also going to bake a cake. And it's going to be kind of like a bake with me and recent reads. So I'm going to grab my cake mix and my books, potentially the dogs, and we're going to go ahead and jump right in. This is already becoming a disaster and I'm not even five minutes in. So far, I um, apparently don't live in my own house. I can't think of where my cake pans are, but I did decide to do cupcakes. And then when I decided to do cupcakes, um, I don't know where the little papers are that I know that we have. So, um, this is already a disaster. Why did I agree to do this to myself? Like, why did I agree to myself to do this? Because now I'm looking through cabinets and I have no idea where anything is. Can I do it without them? You know what, I'm gonna try it because it's already a mess. So, um, while I'm like prepping these things, I, um, I am gonna crack open a cold one. Um, it's actually room temperature, but we're going to go with it. So, um, now that I've cracked open my cold one, um, we're not going to judge my cake box, first of all, because um, this cake box had a long life. And uh, I decided to try to open it before the video, and then I stopped opening it. So, we're not going to discuss it. Um, my favorite is an orange supreme cake. I don't know if you can tell that this is an orange supreme cake, but it's an orange supreme cake. And uh, so that's what we're gonna do today um, because I I just wanna eat one. So um, we're choosing my flavors. And now that, while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and take this part out since I tried to get ahead and do it before the video. And um, let's see, I'm gonna preheat my oven and We're gonna preheat it at 350 because that's what the box says because I'm not gonna do a cake from scratch today. Sorry guys. And got my, my cupcake pan here. And uh, this time this is gonna go, so. I'm gonna put it in the bowl here. And um, you can't see it because you're way over there, but um, it smells delicious. You can't see me either. Also, the dogs are making a lot of noise, so I'm fixing to put them outside. I'm back. All right, so I'm also eating a snack. Well, I'm making a snack, so. That's how this is gonna go. I'm gonna pull my, pull the sleeves up, get some elbow grease. Where'd my instructions go? Hmm. Okay. Um, well, I'm not gonna pull the mixer out. So we're gonna do all this by hand. But, let's see. I don't have my measurements. Are all Duncan Hines cake mixes the same? All right, I'm back. And um, I looked up my instructions, so we're back on track now. Um, I have to do, let's see, three fourths. I'm really close, oh my goodness three-fourths of a cup of water so let's see all right all right we got that was so extra got our water in here now we gotta get our oil out um it technically called for butter but um i don't do that so uh, i always convert it to oil so fun facts about me because if it doesn't call for oil, it's going to. So, let's 
So it said like 2.3. I don't even know what 2.3 is. But um, yeah, that's not half. So we'll think we're good there. All right. So while I'm cracking this egg, I'm going to go ahead and start talking about my recent read since we're like over eight minutes into the video at this point, uh, potentially. That was just a guesstimate. I have no idea how long we are. Um, so the first one I read, because I don't need my hands for this, is the Ursat's Elevator, which is the sixth book in the series of unfortunate events by Lemony Snicket. Um, hi, if you're new here, I'm trying to read the series of unfortunate events because I didn't do it as a child. So, fun fact. Um, I'm not going to go into what this one necessarily is about because it will spoil it considering it is the sixth book in the series. And I just got egg all over my hand, so hey. Um, but, again, shenanigans ensued and um, the story happened. I really had not been loving the, I guess, action in the other books like it wasn't I mean I know it's middle grade but I didn't I just I wasn't enjoying it quite the way that I thought I would but I I was trying to not go into the books with high expectations okay and um I did enjoy the new characters in this one um I did also enjoy the build-up to everything it didn't just seem like a really slow build up. So I uh, I enjoyed that book quite a bit more than I did some of the others in the series previously. So I did um, rate it three out of five stars. Um, I do recommend reading it as an audiobook. I do recommend listening because I really enjoy the narrations. Um, the first three just in case anybody hasn't heard me discuss this, it is narrated, it has a full cast. But then from that point forward, um, it's narrated by Lemony Snicket so, um, himself. So that kind of helps the reading experience, I don't know. I'm kind of rambling here, so this is not going as planned. But I gave it a three out of five stars. I will be continuing because I do want to finish the series. Um, so I think I will be enjoying the rest of the series. Um, and that's where I am with that one. I am not doing good mixing this. Maybe I should have got the mixer out. Food Network would never give me a contract. Oh my Lord. I am not doing good here. All right, so before we get into the next book, um, that I'm gonna talk about because I um, am not mixing this very well. I need to talk about that the day that I'm filming this, um, I am kind of making cupcakes or a cake. I was gonna do a cake, now we're doing cupcakes for a couple different reasons. Um, first off, I, um, would just like to point out that the first event we have going on here is that today is my parents anniversary um so i guess they're gonna enjoy these cupcakes when they get home probably in a flavor that they don't like i don't think my dad likes orange supreme but you know what it's the thought that counted and that's what that's what we're gonna go with also today would have been my granddad's 81st birthday um, on top of the anniversary so you know what we're gonna make cupcakes for that too and um, you're not really baking if you don't get it on your hands and lick it off all right let's see you know what these lumps are just not coming out but I'm gonna just have a momentary pause. So the, uh, I think it was the first, the first book after the Ursat's Elevator that I finished and it was Clap When You Land by Elizabeth 
Acevedo. I also listened to this on audio and I had a great time. Loved it. Um, it started out a little slow and um, I do feel that the best way to have read this would have been the audiobook for me personally. Um, that would be my recommendation because it is written in verse. And um, I feel like because I started reading this physically and then I swapped to the audiobook, uh, I feel like I understood it better and followed it better because the writing was in verse and then I heard it spoken. So um, I kind of separated the two characters. There's two point of views in here. And um, I, I just feel like I separated those two voices very well. And it was two different um, narrators. It was um, Elizabeth Acevedo and somebody else. It doesn't say in here. Um, but I did really enjoy this. And I will be picking up her other books. I have two more of hers that I haven't read yet. And I'll probably be listening to her other book, Poet X, on audio as well. Um, but this, so we can go ahead and get into what it's about, is about um, the flight. Which flight was it? Does it not say? The flight that affected, that was going to the Dominican Republic and it crashed. Um, and there was no survivors a couple a few years ago. Um, I wish I could think of it because I know it's like 6992 or something like that is the flight number, but I could be wrong. But I know it was like a similar number, but it was about that flight. It's kind of. Um, there, the man that was on the plane that died is... Uh, he was going to visit his other daughter because he had two daughters and they didn't know that each other existed and their father dies and then they learn about each other's existence and then um, it all kind of unfolds from there and it, you know, is explaining the grief between these two sisters and the grief bringing them together and it was a whole thing and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I wish it had been a little bit longer actually. Like I wish the parts of them not meeting, like the build up before they met each other or knew each other existed had it been so long and I wish the dynamic between the two sisters had been longer but um I still enjoyed the read and we're also just going to discuss how um, beautiful the naked book is but I gave this a three out of five stars um just got in the middle of mixing this and realized I left an egg out so There's that. Gotta go add an egg back in. Ah. Wow. I'm just not having a good time. I just got egg under my nail. Oh. Anyway. Um, but before I get too far along with the egg deal, I'm gonna talk about the next one. That I read which I read this one physically and I stayed up to like 5 a.m. one night to finish it um, and it is A Spot of Trouble by Terry Wilson. I, I had a good time first of all. I had a great time. This book had all the little quirky cheesiness of a romance that I needed and it's, it's actually pretty short. It was a really quick read um, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars as well and it is about Violet March and Sam Nash. Um, Violet has lived in Turtle Beach her whole life. She has the only pet Dalmatian in Turtle Beach. The fire department and the police department, which her dad is the police chief, have kind of had a feud for years and they have a yearly softball tournament. And it's just a lot of cute fun like that. And Sam moves there from Chicago. Chicago and he starts working for the fire department and they um, run into, into each other chaos ensues and it's and he also has a Dalmatian and everything kind of unfolds multiple times from there um, I I thought this was really cute um, 
I was like halfway through it and then I stayed up to like 5 a.m. one night reading. I probably wasn't five, halfway through, but I was like just under halfway through and I stayed up one night just to finish it because I didn't really have anything better to do. And it was totally worth staying up and, uh, until 5 a.m. to finish it. Um, I had a great time. So I highly recommend if you want a cute summery read. It was definitely more of a summer read rather than a January read, but I still had a great time. So, um, oops. I have come back to realize that I didn't give my full thoughts on everything about a spot of trouble here. I just said I had a great time and let it go. Um, so I do feel that this book felt more like a YA romance than maybe an adult romance, even though all the characters were adults. I just kind of have a semi-juvenile feel to it. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but it did to me. Um, I also feel that there were a couple of things that really didn't get resolved, like answers for characters that, or questions for characters that didn't really get answered. And so I do feel that a couple of things were left unresolved, like side stories. But, um, other than that, I feel like the story answered most things about the questions that some of the characters had. I just feel like there were a couple small ones that we didn't get answers to and, or maybe we got the answers and they were just kind of open-ended answers, but I didn't, I didn't feel that the questions were answered like personally myself. I also have to come discuss what a mess I made making these cupcakes and putting them in the, the little cups on the pan. Me. Taking cupcakes out of the oven and forgetting to discuss the last book. But first, let's discuss <laughs> that I overfilled the pan. And so now these are way bigger than I intended. So um, I'm gonna ice these later and insert a picture somewhere. But the last book I have to talk about is The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. I, um, what was this? I listened to this on audio on the drive to and from work. And I don't even understand what I read. The ending just put a perfect bow on everything. I don't, words? What are words? And actually, I didn't know that the main character was as young as she was. So let's discuss that. Like, why was her age never actually mentioned until almost the end of the book? Because I thought this girl was like 28 and she was like 23, which is not that big of an age difference, but it is when you think that she's only 28. But um, this is a Jane Eyre retelling. And um, it was Book of the Month. Oh, I got something on it. And, um, it's about Jane who moved to Bur Birmingham, Alabama, was a dog walker for some rich people in the Thornfield States, meets a widow, widow, or widow, widow, whatever the male version of a widow is. Chaos ensues. Um, that's all I'm gonna tell. But I gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars. And I will definitely be reading her next book, which is The Reckless Girls. Why?